here we go. Let's unbox the new M4 MacBook Air. This is the base model with um, eight core CPU, eight core GPU. It does have 16 gigabytes of uh, memory of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And it is the 13 inch model. So here it is, the new 13 inch M4 MacBook Air in the new sky blue color. Wow, that looks great. I really like the look of it already. So from the videos and images I've seen, I thought it would be a lot more blue. It actually just kind of looks metallic with a hint of blue. I think that's how I would describe it. I'm not sure how well the camera picks up the color. So yeah, it's almost like a space gray MacBook with a little blue added to it. It looks really, really nice. I actually like it a lot. So I'll put it aside for now. We'll continue with that later. Let's uh, continue with the unboxing. So here we have the usual paperwork that comes with all the Apple products. The braided charging cable. It's uh, also in that same... I'm not sure if I can call this... Yeah, I think this is the sky blue as well. Yeah, it is. They did the same sky blue color as usual. Again, it doesn't really look blue. It's, uh, it's more metallic with a hint of blue. I wouldn't really call this blue, I don't think. And we also get the 30 watt uh, charger. If you get the 10 core GPU version of the MacBooks, uh, you would instead get the 35 watt with the dual port. This one is single port, so you can only charge one laptop at a time. So here we go, let's open it for the first time. I can remove this. <laughs> wow, that looks very nice. So yeah, I'm gonna set this up uh, for programming so that we can start all the tests, do some programming, see how it handles that. And just a quick mention on the port. So you have the usual 3.5 millimeter on this side. And on the left, you have the MagSafe 3 and two USB-C or Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now, let's start setting it up for programming. With a new MacBook, I always go through some basic steps so that it has what I need for programming. The first step is installing the web browser of choice, which for me is Google Chrome. Next is installing essential developer tools like Apple's command line tools, Homebrew, and a code editor such as VS Code or Xcode. This will provide the foundation for writing and running code. I also set up Git for version control, and Anaconda's the Python package manager and Docker if needed. With everything in place, the M4 MacBook Air is now ready for programming, so let's get started with the test. Oh, and I almost forgot, change the terminal theme so that it looks like you're coding in the matrix. Now, let's get started with the programming test. Because this is a MacBook, I like to start with Xcode. Using Xcode is a very smooth experience on personal projects, and I did not experience any issues. I did not run into any freezes on Xcode itself, and as you can see, was able to run the simulator very smoothly. But to get a clearer picture of its performance, I'm using the Xcode benchmark project from GitHub, which provides more standardized results. The repository also includes benchmark scores from other Apple computers, making it easy to compare performance. Before running the test, it's important to follow the instructions by turning off the Wi-Fi, disabling all software running at startup, adjusting the battery settings, and rebooting the MacBook. With the MacBook plugged in, I ran the benchmark test and the M4 MacBook Air completed it in 151 seconds. For comparison, the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air took 140 seconds, making their performance quite similar, although the M4 Air was just a little slower. Okay, so I want to make a quick mention on the overheating because people always ask me about this. So about one hour into the testing with the MacBook plugged in, I started to notice that it started getting very, very hot here at the top. And not only that, but I also experienced a drop in performance in the benchmark test. And this is because the MacBook Airs, remember, they don't have a cooling fan. They just do thermal throttling. So if the CPU starts getting overworked, it'll limit the CPU to stop it from overheating. And not only do you get a drop in performance, but the keyboard itself also became very, very very uncomfortable due to the heat to the point where I had to stop coding for a little bit until it cooled off. And the reason I mentioned this is because I have not experienced the keyboard getting that uncomfortably hot in any of the other recent MacBooks. And also the performance drop due to thermal throttling is one of the reasons that I would always recommend getting a MacBook Pro if you really want to use it for programming. Although the MacBook Airs are very good for portability for students, if you're really going to be pushing it and you can afford a MacBook Pro, I would always go that route instead. And even right now, I had the MacBook turned off for about 30 minutes. I just plugged it in, ran one benchmark test, 
and already the keyboard got very, very hot. Like I said previously, I haven't experienced any MacBook Air getting this uncomfortably hot, at least on the keyboard area, um, in any of the recent MacBooks. So I'm wondering if maybe I just got a bad one or if other people are experiencing the same thing. Let me know in the comments if you have an M for MacBook Air and you've experienced the same overheating issues. I often get asked if a MacBook is good for web development and the short answer is yes. However, I always recommend opting for more RAM if possible as it will better handle running multiple applications and larger code bases. To better test its performance for web development, I ran the Speedometer Browser Benchmark which simulates real-world interactions in web applications like adding to-do list items. The M4 MacBook Air scored 621 runs per minute. For comparison, the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air scored 513 runs per minute. And with the newer Speedometer 3.0 version of this test, the M4 MacBook Air got a score of 50.5. For comparison, the 15-inch M3 MacBook Air scored 40.2 and the M4 MacBook Pro scored 48.9. For AI and Python tests, I like to start with the Python model broad algorithm as it stresses the CPU to test how powerful it is. The M4 MacBook Air completed it in 40 seconds. For comparison, the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air took 47 seconds. Next, I tested the TensorFlow autoencoder. Before running it, I set up the development environment using Anaconda, a widely used Python package manager. The autoencoder processed the 10 input images and the neural network reconstructed them in 14 seconds. For comparison, the M3 MacBook Air took 17 seconds. I also always like to test the SSD speeds of the base model MacBooks as they had some issues when the Apple Silicon chips were initially released. Using the Blackmagic SSD speed test, the M4 MacBook Air averaged read speeds around 2800 megabytes per second and write speeds around 2000 megabytes per second. Also, with the M4 MacBook Air, you'll be happy to know that it supports up to two external displays with up to 6K resolution at 60 Hz. So that was all for today's video. If you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.